How's it going, Chopper Dumps? My name is Obug TV, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be doing an all comprehensive guide to grinding Mirian in Shadow of War. So, of course, with the latest patch, we were able to buy training orders, which means we now have an incentive to use our Mirian. And of course, upgrading our gear and all sorts of stuff also costs a lot more Mirian. Effectively, if you've been playing the game since October and only have played one playthrough, you will have hundreds of thousands of experience, like, like just Mirian rather, and experience, I suppose. But the point is, there's, um, you won't have to worry about grinding any Mirian. However, there are a lot of people that started new playthroughs to start using the new difficulty and some of the new masks and all sort of stuff. And so a lot of people have been asking to see how, what are the best ways to earn Mirian. And so today we've got three main stages of the best ways, in my opinion, to grind Mirian without having to resort to exploits or safe scumming. So starting things off, we have Drake Farming. So if you get a Feral Overlord in your fortress, you will get Drake Baits to spawn in the fortress. As you see on the screen, I'm going to be doing a Drake sort of theme run in Lithlad because Lithlad provides four spawns for Drake Baits, whereas most other fortresses only provide three. Um, so yeah, if you have the Lithlad DLC, you know, go go there and use your Feral Overlord there. But if not, it doesn't really matter where you go, as long as you know where the routes are and you can take the most efficient way to get there. And so effectively, as you see here, I'm going through and I'm just killing these drakes, summoning them in and then killing them. Of course, um, in some situations, I can actually instant kill them, and that's because I'm using the Marauder set on this character, which, you know, I'll be doing an in-depth video later on, but yeah. Effectively, the best way to usually do it is to uh, shadow dominate one of them and then use that drake to summon in the other one. And then whilst the other one's coming in, you kill the drake that you're currently riding. And so effectively, overall, you get um, 250 Mirian from killing a drake or you can get a gem. It's around a 50% drop rate. So effectively, for every four drakes that you kill, you're going to be getting 500 Mirian. And effectively... Um, the gameplay that it took, like the actual gameplay you see here, it took 1 minute and 40 odd seconds in order to actually complete this run. Say, and of course we were making a lot of mistakes there, but let's just assume that it's going to take you a lot longer to do. Say it takes you 2 minutes. Well, in 2 minutes you're therefore gaining 500 Mirian. That means in 10 minutes you are going to be gaining 2,500 Mirian, and in an hour you are gaining 15,000 Mirian. Of course, you'll get abs you'll get really really bored if you do this for an hour straight. But the fact is, is if you need like a little bit of Mirian, like an extra two thousand or so to upgrade your gear, and so yeah, you can just acquire a little bit of stuff there, and then that's pretty good. Um, however, this is not the most effective method. Of course, we are moving on to the second stage, and that is completing sieges. At the end of the Shadow Wars, you have the ability to complete an endless siege, and effectively, once you're at level eighty, you can <laughs> you can acquire some incredible amounts of gear very very fast playing on brutal difficulty guarantees a war chief with two captains and effectively that means you get three three bits of gear effectively for every single war chief and so pretty much when you have the six sort of war chiefs that almost guarantees 18 captains which you can get their gear from so therefore you're getting up to 18 pieces of gear which is absolutely mental because at level 80 these are worth so much to just destroy but effectively, what happens is, is when you do the siege, you get 1500 for just completing it. Then, because I was running the Marauder set, I got a little bit of extra Mirian dropping, and so I got around an extra 500 from the actual Grunts and Captains Mirian that dropped. And then, after like destroying all of my excess gear that I got, I was able to acquire 8,365 Mirian. Not even joking, I added it up. 8,000 Mirian, pretty much, from destroying all of the gear that I collected in that siege. Overall, that means that you get around 10,365 Mirian from completing any siege at max level 80. And considering a siege can take anywhere from literally like 15 minutes to 20 minutes, assuming that you do it really quickly and do it in 15 minutes, that means every hour you're getting upwards of 41,460 Mirian. So as you see there guys, you can acquire lots and lots of mirror in a very very short space of time. And plus, not to forget, when you're doing these sieges, this gives you opportunities to recruit new captains or just get lots and lots of experience, which of course now with the new prestige skills is very very important. Of course, I'm, <laughs> I've got like 30 odd skill points in almost all of the actual um, the like prestige ones now. Like I've got tons of experience and that's just it's just pretty cool in general I would say. 
But um, yeah, effectively that is the two main methods. But now we're going to move on a little bit into the Marauder set. So pretty much long short of it is, is it increases your chance of dropping Mirian from defeated enemies by about 40%. Of course I'm going to be doing an in-depth video because it actually has the potential for one of the highest damage numbers in the game. So be hyped for that. But effectively, when you kill a Grunt, you, like the range of Mirian you can actually get from them is incredibly like random. You can literally get anywhere from 5 million all the way up to 30. Um, and so that's why I had to sort of get the rough estimate of around 500 million. Because of course I couldn't actually figure it out. Um, and so yeah, I got a lot and lot of million from just killing those basic grunts. And of course if you're wearing this set all the time, you can just go around and just kill a bunch of dudes. And it'll just sort of acquire over time. Um, yeah, pretty much if you do like a couple of sieges, well you've already 2,000 ahead of a lo load of other people. So you know, hey. No one's going to complain about it, and that's just 2,000 Miriam. But the thing is, what you can do is you can also take the Wealth Gems. I don't think they're personally worth it, because if you put them on your weapons, you're not only sacrificing damage, but you're, only, you're sacrificing that damage only to gain 15% bonus chance to drop. So therefore, you, if you have this set equipped and the gem on the particular piece of gear, then you are increasing your chance up to 55%. But considering you can literally get an extra 30% damage, I I just don't think it's that worth it. And considering it is such a small amount of Mirian, I wouldn't say it's particularly worth it. However, if you want to just boost your overall Mirian gain, I would recommend using the Marauder set. Of course, when I've done my in-depth video on it, you'll see that it actually has some insane damage. And it may actually become my favourite legendary set in the game due to the amount of damage it can produce. And so, hey, maybe, maybe you'll start using it as well. If it's not for the mirroring gain, then it's going to be because it's an incredibly strong piece of gear. So, like, because that is exactly what it is. It is really good. And that is it, guys. That is pretty much the long short of the Mirian grinding in Shadow of War. Of course, you can do other sort of tactics like saves coming, which is where you purchase your training order and then immediately quit the game. Therefore, it doesn't take away your Mirian, but then it, it actually applies onto your captain. Do I do not recommend doing this. My game has become so glitchy as of late that closing your game has the potential for you to reset hours of progress. Like, I'm not even joking. My game once froze, and as a result of me having to, like, close the game, I ended up losing not only a legendary captain, which I could have used to get a nice piece of gear or whatever, but I also lost one of the ultra-rare pretender captains at the same time, just because they ambushed me in that region. Like, it reset tons of things. All the enemy captains in the region got, re like, removed. It was... It was pretty mental. Um, it's safe to say I would do not. I do not like like encourage you to go out and do saves coming because all it's going to do is ruin your game. Um, of course, I can understand it in some situations. A lot of people like to like quit the game when their captains die in like pit fights or something. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I, I I never really understood it, but I I have a friend who personally does it. And I think it's a bit strange, but then I realised that I went online and a lot of people do like to do a lot of saves coming. You lot are crazy, okay? Um, just get on with it, really, but whatever. Effectively, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope it was useful or interesting. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully, guys, you will learn some something and hopefully be able to acquire lots and lots of Mirian in the game. And, of course, um, a lot of you, the more intelligent of you viewers, would have figured out that the, the first method could also be used for gem grinding. So, if you have the Prospector skill which is unlocked from doing all the Gondoran artifacts, you will be able to grind up a lot of gems as well from the Drake farming. But anyway, guys, I've said what I need to say. Uh, pretty much, guys, have a wonderful day. Cue the music.